So there's some interesting news out today. There's a leaked Google document that talks about the state of AI and where Google is in terms of AI and its progression called We Have No Moat and Neither Does OpenAI. And it's got some pretty big claims. Um, it was leaked by a Google employee. It's from a researcher inside of Google. So it starts out saying, we've done a lot of looking over all our shoulders at OpenAI. Who will cross the next milestone? What will the next move be? So this is talking about the fact that Google was seen as the number one AI company for a long time. And then OpenAI kind of comes out of nowhere and maybe I would even go as far as to say dominates the AI playing field of ChatGPT, all their other software. And now it's front and center in the talk about AI and where we're heading. Then it continues, but the uncomfortable truth is we are in position to win this arms race and neither is open AI. While we've been squabbling, a third faction has been quietly eating our lunch. I'm talking, of course, about open source. Plainly put, they are lapping us. So this, this document goes on to say that a lot of the big problems that Google was working on, they couldn't quite figure it out, was solved kind of quickly when some of these models were just released to the public. People are running foundation models on a Pixel 6. People can fine-tune a personalized AI on your laptop in one evening. Their entire website's full of art models with no restrictions whatsoever. Text is not far behind. And the current multimodal science QA was trained in one hour. This person goes on to say, while our, our models still hold a slight edge in terms of quality, the gap is closing astonishingly quickly. Open source models are faster, more customizable, more private, and pound for pound more capable. We have no secret sauce. There's nothing, there's no moat that protects them from everybody else sort of coming in and having the same software, the same capabilities, etc. An uh, interesting point was this giant models are slowing us down. In the long run, the best models are the ones which can be iterated upon quickly. This is showing basically um, how quickly an open source model is doing 90% of what, you know, 92% of what ChatGPT is doing. Vicuna, I'm going to assume it's pronounced Vicuna, an open sourced chatbot impressing GPT-4 with 90% ChatGPT quality. And then, then it goes on to show the side-by-side -side comparison and where Vicuna is next to ChatGPT and Bard, etc. So, and then the researcher asks, what happened? So basically, Meta or Facebook, as they used to be called, uh, had this AI model called Llama, and it was leaked to the public. So this model, it had no instruction or conversation tuning and had no RLFH which means um, reinforcement learning with human feedback. Nonetheless, the community immediately understood the significance of what they have been given. And tremendous outpouring of innovation followed and within just days between major developments. And they're going to have a timeline at the end of this article that I'll show you. But basically, barely a month later, there were huge variants with instruction tuning, quantization, quality improvements, human evals, multimodality, RLFH, and many of which build on top of each other. Basically, what this means is as soon as this thing got out there, it was sort of the global community started working on it and the innovations just came much, much faster than they would if they would have stayed behind closed walls at a, at a big tech firm. Now he's saying why we could have seen it coming and in many ways, this shouldn't be a surprise to anyone. So basically, he's comparing this to stable diffusion where low cost public involvement was enabled by a vastly cheaper mechanism, mechanism for fine tuning called low rank adaptation or LoRa. And in both cases, access to a sufficiently high quality model kicked off a flurry of ideas and iterations from individuals and institutions around the world. In both cases, this quickly outpaced the larger players. These contributions were pivotal in the image generation space, setting stable diffusion on a different path from DALI. So what this is saying is that the software, the AI models that get put out to the public where everybody contributes, they, those tend to dominate versus, you know, these closed models in terms of cultural impact, innovation, product integrations, marketplaces, user interfaces, etc. And I say Dali, while it was impressive at first, comparing it to something like Midjourney, I gotta say, like stable diffusion Midjourney, they're they seem much farther advanced than Dali at this point. So whether the same thing will happen for LLMs remains to be seen, but the broad structural elements are the same. Many of these projects are saving time by training on small, highly curated data sets. This suggests that there's some flexibility in data scaling laws. And of course, he says that directly competing with open source is a losing proposition. 
Then he goes on a bit to explain that basically Google can't compete with this. They can't just lock people up for using it. People can use it for personal use. They will understand it better. Like the illegal cover afforded by personal use and the impracticality of prosecuting individuals means that individuals are getting access to these technologies while they are hot. Being your own customer means you, you understand the use case. So basically large, like monolithic institutions can't be as good as basically the whole world contributing and working quickly and, um, sharing what they, what they've learned. And then he says, paradoxically, the one clear winner in all this is Meta because the leaked model was theirs. They have effectively garnered an entire planet's worth of free labor. Since most open source innovation is happening on top of their architecture, there's nothing stopping them from directly incorporating it into their products. So what he's saying is that Facebook, actually, this was kind of a big win for them, even though it was a massive screw up. The, the only time that they couldn't do something genius is when they screw it up and it just happens. I mean, he's not saying that. I'm saying that. But yeah. Google and OpenAI have both gravitated defensively towards release patterns that allow them to retain tight control over how their models are used. But this control is a fiction. And he says we cannot hope to both drive innovation and control it. And he's saying that in the end, open AI doesn't matter. They were such a big thing that happened, but in the end, they're just not going to matter. No one's going to have a moat, not Google, not open AI, nobody. Open source alternatives can and will eventually eclipse them unless they change their stance. In this respect, at least we can make the first move, meaning that their open AI overcame them and is ahead of them in some ways, but they're saying, if they see where the puck is going, they can start of start moving towards that spot first before OpenAI, but becoming more open and open source. And so this is the timeline. So February 24th, 2023, Llama is launched. Uh, March 3rd, 2023, the inevitable happens, which is Llama is leaked to the public. I remember the day that that happened. That was huge. And people were kind of going nuts over this thing. And so then a little over a week later, uh, so lang uh, March 12th, language models on a toaster. Um, a week, a little over a week later, Artyom gets the model working on a Raspberry Pi. Now the model works too slowly, but it sort of sets the stage for an onslaught of mification efforts. Great use of the word onslaught. I love it. Then next day, Stanford releases Alpaca. They're able to do fine tuning within um, hours or a single, I think that's an NVIDIA card. So they're able to do training on a single RTX 4090. So suddenly anyone could fine tune the model to do anything, kicking off a race to the bottom on low budget fine tuning projects. Papers proudly describe their total spend of a few hundred dollars. This is why one of the reasons why AI is so exciting and so mind blowing to me, because the, the things that it could do potentially is unlimited and the cost to do it seems to be so much cheaper than we're we can even realize is it is getting cheaper still. It's like the most powerful thing at NEs. It's it's crazy. And then March 19, 2023, we have that Vicuna. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but it's uh, catching up with Bard and Chad GPT. And then there's uh, some sort of an open source GPT-3. And these models are trained from scratch, meaning the community is no longer dependent on Llama. So they took this leak of Llama and they tinkered with it until they basically replicated. Now they have their own thing that is not sort of dependent on Facebook or Meta in any way. It's out. They, they basically copy and pasted it out into the wild. <clears throat> so I'm going to post this article on natural20.com. That's natural2020.com. Go check it out. My name is Wes Roth. Thank you for watching.